going back to that first fight with Ruiz, were you complacent? Because it happens in football. No excuses. You know, this little chubby Mexican that beat me. Sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the champ right here. Please release me. <laughs> Fury fight. Why are you not fighting him now? It's the fight that everybody wants to see. I smoke that guy. Sometimes you've got to fight in the pocket and let a mother know. I ain't moving in away. Here. Yeah. Do you respect him as a boxer? Do you respect him as a man? I'm not friends with no one. They're all enemies at the end of the day. On this episode of The Overlap, I travelled to Sheffield to spend an afternoon with the unified heavyweight world champion. Anthony Joshua has had a rapid rise to the summit of world boxing. We talked about his early brushes with the law, boxing's need to reform, the role of promoters, and his rivalry with Tyson Fury. Hi, Anthony. Welcome to The Overlap. Every guest on The Overlap has to do a challenge, and yours is to put me through my paces oh. and give me a bit of a... A bit I of boxing. I thought I had to do a challenge. No, 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 no. <laughs> you bottled out, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it, then. Let's go. So here we've got Ooh. the chaser machine. We used to have something like this, you know. At United, it was uh, called a Batak machine. Yeah? It must have developed from your day. Yeah, it has. What's the, right, what's the right distance to stand away from it? Around here? A little bit closer, I'd say, yeah, so you can just... So I can reach. Chase it. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Go, yeah. One minute. Chaser. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh. go. <laughs> go on, champ. Top right. What are you? <laughs> top right. I'll be dumb. I'll be, I'll be down by now, wanna? <laughs> I'll be down. Top left. Top left. Bottom left. Lovely. Yeah. Are you? Lovely. Ten seconds left. Doing a great job. Keep it going. Left, left, Don't left. Don't feel like it. <laughs> Bottom left. Three, two. Well done, well done, well done. Hell, yeah, 107. Hell. <laughs> yeah. You've got yourself a chocolate bar. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the next exercise, which is less taxing on the body. What's the, uh, can I reach that? <laughs> Is that set, that's set for you, though, isn't it? Nah, it's set for you. I set this for you. <laughs> go on, you go, you go. So it's speedball, yeah. hand-eye coordination, yeah? So it gives you a little bit of rhythm, works the oh. shoulders. So you're just trying to catch it before it comes back. See, that's there, before it gets back. No? I get you. I just don't think it's going to happen. Why? I just... Oh, it's not, it's not as actually heavy as you think, is it? Nah, this one's not heavy. Oh. Uh oh. There we go. This looks so easy when you're doing it, by the way, and then it's absolutely unbelievable. I like your skills there. That's a, that's a really advanced technique what you're doing there. Yeah. Is really it? advanced. Don't feel like it. Because what they normally do, yeah, the way you're doing it is you'll kind of be like. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. Kind of like. And a wow. Way. Boom. That's kind of an advanced way of what you'll do. That is unbelievable, <laughs> that, by the way. But you're doing that technique. You're kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of like the speedball. Jeez. <laughs> there we go. Boxers have used this for time. I know, yeah. For time, yeah. Ooh. That's the champ. That's the champ Ooh. right here. That's the champ. Got <laughs> <laughs> some gloves? Yeah. Yeah? Get these out of the way. Wasn't bad, was it? Not bad Not at bad. all. Not bad. So here we've got some like 14-ounce gloves, training gloves. What handed are you? What right-handed? Right-handed, yeah. Yeah. All right, that's the haymaker. Yeah. <laughs> so yours would be lighter than this, would they? Yeah, four ounces lighter. These are close to what? you would be using, but at the same time in training, you want to protect your knuckles. Yeah. So you don't want to be using the same weight gloves that you'll be fighting in because, you're, you know, your hands and stuff, you need to look after your hands. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you ever put your gloves on? When I just it? remember sitting back watching him train at the gym and watching the other guys do it and asking if I could do this, I could take these guys on. 
But when you're on the outside, it's easy. Yeah. And once you get in there, it's completely different. And I just remember getting my head punched in <laughs> week after week after week. But after going through that process, week after week, then it turns into month after month, you yeah. start kind of changing the tide. And that was like what I loved about boxing is I could track my progression. There was a group of us that started and then slowly as the, as the training got harder, a lot of people started dropping off. A lot of people off. dropped off, man. Yeah. Obviously, he yeah, just kept yeah. on improving, improving, improving. And the thing is, in boxing, you can go in there like today and be like, let me just show you a bit of work on this chaser, on the uh, speed ball. Oh, you know what? You got your glove. Ben, let's do a bit of sparring. Come on. Let's, you ain't got your gum shot. Don't worry. And next minute now, you're sparring. Is that something happened to me? No, not today. Not today. Not today. But that's the process of boxing. Yeah. But, so, you want to do any sparring today? Can I do a little bit? You want to do a little yeah, bit? Yeah, a little bit. Like I get someone in? Yeah, but not like, will I get hurt? Like, I mean, a little I'll, bit. I'll, I'll jump in. <laughs> so, no, Chewing up here, by the yeah, way. Yeah. I mean, I've seen that United <laughs> don't tell it. Come on. <laughs> Come on, yeah, I'll do a little bit, I think. I think we'll I, see, yeah. we'll see. Okay, so this is like the heavy bag, right? Yeah. Oh. And Jeez, I believe that this is such an important tool. When you punch an opponent, no one's probably going to weigh as much as this bag. Yeah. So it's really conditioning that boom, that yeah. the fibers in your body, and you're going for four or five minutes on this bag. You're thinking of your rhythm, your shape, you're learning your range. But for you, <laughs> as you're beginning, we will work on power output and a tiny bit of conditioning. Yeah. So we could say we're going to go for just 20 there. And then after, we'll probably go for the boom, the constant. So what that's doing is working the rotation, the rotation. Mm. Yeah? Mm. So I only go for 20 punches. Yeah. Up the top. The top? So like my top's down here, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Up the top, like... <laughs> so you kind of want to work here? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 13, 18, 19, 20. Now, find mm. the position of your body yeah. where you're going to rotate and you're going to finish with balance and power. Yeah. Three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Lovely. So now you can start feeling the shock yeah. absorbers working. Then you're gonna maybe develop it and go bang and bring it up with a left hook as well. Mm. There, bang. Ooh. Feeling balanced? <laughs> Lovely. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, lovely. That's it, champ. That's it, champ. You got into trouble when you were younger, back then? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I look at you now on television, it's the first time I've met you today face to face. You're an incredible sportsman, an incredible role model. You're incredible in terms of your, your professional life, your, your management team, the way in which you've taken care of your own management and promoted your own fights. But was that the crossroads in your life where you thought, I need to change, this is the moment, I'm not coming back here again? You know, Did you feel totally that that true. night? But that's when I started boxing. So what happened now? The boxing came straight after that, did it? After that. So I got let out on bail. After like two months, yeah. it was like, we, I had to sign on. I got banned from the area I grew up in. My auntie's house had to go up as a bell condition to say I can't leave the country. If I leave, then the government... What, security? Take against your auntie's house? Yeah. Put, I had to be on tag, had to be at home every day at 8 o'clock. And then I got banned from Watford, so I'm now coming to London a lot. So I'm in London now, and I'm thinking, boy, if I go to jail, I need to get strong. So I start pumping weights, and that's when he took me down the gym. You know, there was times when I had to rush out in the gym, because I'm like, oh, yeah. I've got to rush. You know, the, the coach wants to talk to you after training, but I'm, like, I'm on tag. Yeah. I can't sit here and talk. So, yeah, then I got not guilty, and uh, I carried on on that path. And then two and a bit years later, I'm at the Olympics. Wow. My whole life flipped on its head without Ben introducing me, and who knows what I would be doing now. And what about his boxing story? I mean, I asked you about it. You were telling me before, it's incredible. Just tell us a little bit about it and what happened. So it was coming up to my third professional fight. I didn't have no sponsorship or anything like that. So it was a thing where when I was fighting, that's why I was getting paid. And then literally, I think a week before the fight, I had an eye injury, a lower orbital black fracture. 
um, and I was thinking, shit, like I've got, I've got to still fight. But it was a thing where, after that was session, that money? Huh? Was that because, was that because of the money? You, had to, you felt you had to fight at the time, yeah. And it was just coming up to Christmas as well. Just got a family as well. So it's just a thing where I kind of went into that fight more or less blind in this eye because I couldn't see anything, and obviously good in this eye. So we went into the fight, got worse, and then you know eventually when it comes to do my medical, we medical him because you have to do it every single year. Obviously, the doctor said he couldn't pass it because of the eye. Well, I didn't really know how severe his eye injury was. He kind of yeah. kept it to himself. Do you know what I mean? It's that warrior mentality, he's just trying to roll the punches. He went into the fight with a fractured because eye socket. Because in boxing, mm. like, you're supposed to. They say, you know, you fight with one arm. <laughs> uh, you fight with one leg, uh, like, you know? It's real, like, you get your eye bust, like, how are you going to fight? Like, if I had a broken fingernail, I'm out there, mate. Well, this boxing is a funny old game. So. I did retire undefeated, by the way, undefeated. <laughs> oh, did you, did you, did you, you lose that fight? You must no, 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 it was a draw, it was a draw. You're doing well, eh? One night, what can you say? You can draw me one night. That's unbelievable. <laughs> is what it is. At least I'm still, you know, supporting, you know, Antino on his road as well. And I'll always be here to support him. I like to just come under. Boom. Yeah. The Fury fight. Why are you not fighting him now? It's not me. It's the other side that are letting this down. People seem to think that me not calling people out I mean that I ain't got the passion to kick some ass. I'm ready. So, pad work's quite new in boxing, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. The bag don't hit back. Okay. Yeah. But working here, yeah. we can work on defence and combinations. Are you destroying people's wrists that you're on these pads with? They must, their wrists must be like... Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so, you you're right-handed. Yeah. Yeah? So that's the power shot, that's the daddy which is basically, boom, yeah? So you know that already. This is your smoke screen. Yeah. So you're going to use this to set your opponent up. So you could hit him, like, maybe with four of these. Two, three, four, before you land the big... Yeah. Boom. And the reason why I'm using one pad is because an opponent only has one head. OK. So I'm just going to hold this, yeah? <laughs> and I want you why to... Why am I nervous? <laughs> and I want you to work it however you want. Oh. Lovely. 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 <laughs> and then this one's going to be here, so as you... Oh. There we go. There we go. Now look. you can throw the Africa, which is one of my favourite punches. Yeah. As a big guy, yeah. we're always taught to box here. It's yeah. very rangy. But with me, I like to just come under. Boom! Yeah, yeah it's a shot you don't see coming and it's very <laughs> devastating. Punch. Lovely! That's on pair, eh? <laughs> hey, listen, we'll still have a chat later, see if you want to get into this boxing game. Bro. I actually like it from a fitness point of view. Yeah. But, my, I mean, seriously, it's embarrassing. Go on, give me that uppercut. <laughs> Lovely! Lovely. 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 Now, wing that in, and you're going to go... Ah. Bang! That's how you knock her. Yeah? Knock someone out. It's the accuracy, isn't it? That's what it's about. It's the accuracy. Now... The element of boxing is to hit and not get hit. Yeah. But sometimes you've got to fight in the pocket. Yeah. And let a <laughs> know. I ain't moving away. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah? Like, it's like a struggle, isn't it? I, I mean... It's a struggle for territory. Yeah. A struggle for respect. The war's not always going to be no. won with ease. Sometimes wars are bloody. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Roll. Roll. One, two, three, four. Roll. Roll. One, two, three, four. Roll, roll. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Boxing Thank 101, guys. Thank you so guys. much. Thank you. Ready? I'm good. Okay. We'll be a metre apart, please. <laughs> We're in the gym right now, so sorry about all the noise. <laughs> Young athletes downstairs running around. In the last few months, everyone probably not just in this country, but around the world, has seen what's happened with regards to the Fury fight that was going to happen. Yeah. What, what's happening there? You know, we could say a million things. Tell There's me always, a million things. You want a million things? Yeah, tell me a million things. Because, honestly, I'm fascinated in this. In football, everybody has to play each other. That's a true, given. True, true. Why are you not fighting him now? How can you be told who to fight when it's the two best fighters? It's a fight that everyone wants. So there's his side, there's her side, and then there's the truth. So we'll get to the truth, what my truth is. I come into this pro game as a young heavyweight, starting at the bottom. Fury and these guys are well advanced, well ahead of me, in terms of they were professionals when I first walked into the boxing gym. 
So when I first walked into the gym with Ben, these guys were already done their amateur career and they're pros. So when I done my Olympic thing quick and I turned pro, I'm looking at these guys like I want what they've got. And I've, I've fought champion after champion, defended my belt against my mandatory challenges, lost my belt, won it back. And there's a time now where it comes to fighting the guys that people want to see me fight, which is no problem. Mm. It's not a problem at all. We do good business with people. And it's just clear to see now with this last situation we face is like the 258 management, Matchroom, done a great job of putting on a potential show that was ready, signed, to go ahead during the pandemic which was a nice offer, lucrative offer, where X amount of fans would have been able to go, ready to sign, ready to fight. No qualms on my ends, I'm ready. And they bailed out on not only me, but the boxing world. Because this is the first time in 120 years or so that two British fighters would have fought for the undisputed title. It was a legacy fight. And that's the only reason why it didn't happen, because they either wasn't organised on their side, Fury wasn't ready for the fight, I don't know what it is, but my truth, all I can say is that if you look at the history, the email trails, the conversations, we had the deal in place, we were the ones who found the venue, we were the ones who took the offer to them, and they were the ones who couldn't fulfil their end by just putting a signature on the contract. So you don't believe in this legal thing that happened in America, you think that's just a smokescreen? No, that's real. But that can't be an excuse as to why... So you think he should have just ignored that and just gone on and took the fight I anyway. think he should have made it clear from the get-go ah. that... So you don't think he basically was transparent at the beginning about what was happening? Yeah, it's not a problem. If, if I'm not ready to fight, I say, look, guys, look, I'm going to be real with you. I want the undisputed fight, but let me get past my mandatory challenger. Let me get past my rematch clause, and then I'm going to win, I'm going to do this for us, and I'm going to fight this undisputed fight. That's just honest. Mm. Rather than saying, I want the undisputed, he's dodging me, he's doing this, they don't want it. I'm giving them a deadline before they make this contract viable. If they don't get it to me in 24 hours, I'm not signing it. We get the contract in mm. 23 hours. Well, we want this and that. We make sure, we keep on plugging away, making sure that the deal but is why would they do that if they knew they couldn't take it? In it? Why, would, why would they do that? So this is where I can't understand because yeah. we got it to the line where we just need to step over, yeah. which is the signing of the contract, signing of the agreement. Do you so, not think he wants it? You think he doesn't want this fight I'm now? I'm sure he's a, like, he's a fighter, isn't he? Yeah. He's not going to... What's the worst that can happen? You get hit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's been doing it for years. However, I just know on my end, and my management team and my promoters, we've done everything we can to make this happen. And as long as I'm champion, I'll compete with anyone. Will it happen in the future? Can this contract not be signed now that you've got for after these two fights that you're both going to have? So I've got a tough challenger coming up now. Great fighter. But irrespective, even if you win, I, lose, he wins or loses, you can still take oh, this fight. Oh, without the belt? Yeah, with or without the belts. Forget the belt. Because I think, honestly, I mean... I, I rate that. I rate that. That's what I'm you talking can about. Ju you can sign this contract now and say, well, irrespective of whatever we'll happens... We'll fight 100%. Let's do yeah. it. Let's do it. I think, because to me, it's the fight that you want. It's the fight that everybody wants to see. Yeah. And I'll I mean, smoke I, that guy. <laughs> I will. It's annoying. Is he annoying you at the moment? Not annoying. It's, it's you were having a Twitter like, spat the other day, weren't you? I thought it was quite it's interesting. It's just like, for me, it was just like, I don't really get into the Twitter back and forth because it's Twitter fingers. Like, I can be, anyone can sit behind a computer and yeah. talk. I liked it. Yeah, but let's, let's be real. Let's be honest. Yeah. Let's let the people know. You were the one who let the fans down because everyone seems to think, I fought in December the 12th when they were like, who do you want to fight next? I said, I don't want to call out any names. And I know because... I'm going to start shouting out people's names and I'm going to be in this position now where the guy's yeah. name I'm shouting out doesn't want to fight or he's not ready to fight. I said, whoever's got the championship belt, let yeah. me fight. And people seem to think that me not calling people out and effing and blinding and flipping tables mean that I ain't got the passion to kick some ass. Believe me, I'm down. I'm in the gym now as we're speaking. You don't see me sitting in a pub having this interview. I'm in my place of work. It's not me. Mm. It's the other side that are letting this down. We are keen, we're ready. I was three years as a professional, I won the championship belt. And ever since then, I've been defending and fighting and remaining as champion. So if you look at my history, it shows that I'm a championship level fighter and I'll stay here, providing that the champions want to come and fight. Last question on him. You, I suspect you respect every boxer, just naturally, but do you respect him as a boxer? Do you respect him as a man? I don't know. You don't know if you respect him as a boxer or a man? I like Vladimir Klitschko, he's cool. He's cool. So you don't respect him as a man? 
I don't know, I don't really look at anyone in my industry like that. There's people I want to just fight. I ain't got no time for none of them. I'm not friends with no one. They're all enemies at the end of the day. These promoters, are they too influential? When I was younger, someone came up with a contract. 10 million? Was that tempting? Nah. Eddie Hearn is one of the most prominent promoters. Yeah. Would you see him as someone who owns you, works for you? We're partners. I've been really critical of football's governance in the last three to four months because yeah. I think it's it's dysfunctional in, in, in football. football. In football, it's well, dysfunctional. Then boxing must be <laughs> on his way out. When I look at boxing, I think <laughs> football looks really good. Football looks unbelievable. I think, why didn't I go? Why didn't, why didn't he take me to? But I look at boxing football. and I think to myself, yeah. You've got these organisations that are sat here with these belts yeah. tell, telling you who to fight, yeah. not putting you together, mandatory challenges that aren't... To me, it just feels like quite dark, a little bit sort of like... Dinosaur. Mafia, yeah, a yeah, little mafia. bit... Like, not clean, mm. not transparent, mm. not independent. Mm -hmm. Is that how you feel? So it's, it's a business that's stuck in the dark ages, but we're doing a lot of good work to bring it to the light, bring it to the forefront. I think broadcasters have a big part to say in this situation you're with one yeah. TV I'm with another so who's going to get the rights to put the fight yeah. on first I'm one promoter that's aligned with one governing body you're aligned with another and I'm just that geezer on the sidelines that's like I'll fight anyone yeah but there's a lot of other things that are in the way but it's frustrating think, though eh? but with the fury fight we got all that out of the way yeah and we presented the deal yeah but there why no issues. Anthony Joshua Tyson Fury two unbelievable characters, personalities, st strong mindsets. And you've got these sort of like governing bodies with sort of like people in there that, you know, no one's ever seen the faceless. Mm. Telling you who to fight, where to be, telling you you can't fight. Surely you just throw the belts down and you say, right, okay, we're the best boxers, we're right, gonna okay. fight. This, can but, you do that? Is that realistic or is that just me being- No, no, it's real, it's real. But the only way I'd do that is if I lost what I have. When I fight for these belts, I fight because of the great history yeah. it has. Do you know? Yeah. As much as I want to just fight these people, it's weird that we put so much credibility towards these titles. It's about putting on the right fight, it's mm. doing good business, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. So, as I said, the tides are changing. Before, a lot of fighters would fight for the titles for nothing. You know, with or without titles, I want to fight, I'm a throwback fighter, but people are becoming more business savvy. and. The tide will change where fighters start making the right decision for themselves. And just trying to organise a fight is so much hurdles and obstacles. It shouldn't be that difficult, should it? It shouldn't uh, be. Ideally, it's sport. It no. It's sport, you know. You, it, so, like, it, imagine quickly. So, I'm training for the Fury fight. I'm understanding negotiations. I'm speaking yeah. with people abroad, management, this, that, training team, getting things ready. Then all of a sudden, whew, it stops. The whole process starts again. And. I'm so like close to it because I'm the fighter at the yeah. end of the day. I got to get ready for. What the did, when you first got that message through, it's off. What was your feeling? Where's that Twitter? Where's my phone? Let me get on Twitter. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's annoying. Would a boxer ever ring another boxer up? I mean, it sounds really. Uh, yeah, sounds yeah, really yeah. They would. They would. Would you they just would. ring him up and say, "Should we do this?" And yeah, yeah, yeah. We, this is the thing, I, I speak to him, I cuss him though. I don't really chat to him like a mate. Yeah. I and mean, he don't talk to me like a mate either. No. Nah, we're quite, I'm quite aggressive. I just do mine quietly. He does his on the internet live, I do mine quite quietly. Will Wilder beat him, do you think? Do you want him to be honest? Mm. Don't care. You don't care? With all due respect to your question. Yeah. I just don't care. But you must want him to win so that you win and then you come together for this. I'll fight them at one stage. As I said, yeah. I put the deals, even Wilder. We gave him a very lucrative deal to come and join a network where we could both fight on, which was a massive offer. Decided to fight Fury, I think, because Fury had just come off his layoff and he must have thought it would be an easy touch. Yeah. That's where we're at now. Them two are still going through their litigations and leg legalities. We're straight shooters. We're yeah. quite professional. We're very forward thinking in our organisation. That's how I think we've managed to but get I, ahead so quickly. But I think other people think that on the outside as well. I yeah. Think when we, yeah, I think so. I mean, I've met you for the first time today, but I think my view would be when I'm, I, I would think that you look like you're in control, that you're not having people leeching off you, that you've managed yourself well, that you're in control of things. And it's one of the things that I see sometimes when I see the promoter come and sit next to the boxer at the end of the you fight. You think to yourself. I'm sat there at home and I'm like, yeah. 
this guy, like, he's got a pinstripe suit on, he's got gelled hair. Yeah, yeah, And these, yeah. and these boxers next to me who just had 12 rounds of hell. Yeah. And this guy's speaking for him, and I'm yeah. thinking, go yeah. away. Yeah, 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 it's the truth. And even as a fighter, you've got to encourage, speak for yourself. Be yeah. good in front of the camera. Learn, learn the tricks of the trade, but some people want to make it about themselves, etc. Are they too influential, these promoters? Mm -mm. Honestly, it's all about depends who, you who it is. With. It just yeah. depends who you work with. And it depends what type of person you are. Yeah. You might want to be in the background. You mm. know, you might pu push your promoters to do all the yeah. talking. Because if you talk too much, you put yourself in the firing yeah. line. There must be some horror stories of boxers being ripped off by promoters, now, by, this... by management, by people around them. There must be some horror stories. So what I learned, when you first start your career as a footballer, my career as a boxer, there's always something that you would have told yourself, like, oh, I want to represent myself properly. Aside from like your football skills, yeah. or I want to make sure that I set myself up after football. And you'll always stay true to that yeah. path. And one of mine was when I hear about a lot of the mistakes boxers make, every film you watch is always about that boxer that lost everything and yeah. is kind of lonely. I always wanted to make sure I make quite executive decisions so that once it's all done, the ship doesn't sink. We all still sail towards greatness, you know. And even after I'm not here, there's still a system in place that all of us can kind of, we create something which is so colossal. Mm. It's, bigger than we can imagine. So that's like what I was always true to is making sure I make the right decisions as an athlete because um, the stories, especially in boxing, where mistakes are made um, are too common rather than boxers doing the opposite. Mm. In boxing, the feeling would be that the promoter almost owns the boxer. You obviously have okay. one. Okay, that's yeah, the feeling. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, you know, yeah. That's the thing. Going back to Don King, and yes, I yes, felt like yes, he owned yes, Mike yes. Tyson. I felt like he had control of, of okay. him. It's quite interesting. And then when I look at you, you've got Eddie Hearn, who's one of the most prominent promoters. Very good promoter. Yeah. Very Would good. you see him as someone who owns you, works for you, or you're a partner? How would um, you see it? We're partners. We're, very, we're, good, we're good strategic partners from day one. So what's the split? 100% of of a boxing fight, not yours specifically, but what would be the true split? 100% so, of the person of a fight, okay. what would go to the promoter, what would go to the fighters, what would go to everyone else? Depends, different, depends. I'm not asking for yours, I'm asking yeah, generally. No, no. It, it just truly depends on, on your marketability, but to break it down, I could sign you as a young fighter. I could just offer you a fee, yeah? It's not like you owe me or anything. Yeah. Depends. I could, I could buy out your image rights and say, I want to buy out all of your rights, your, your future earnings. So you're controlled. I, yeah, I control you. No matter if you go to Tom, Dick or Harry or on this network or that network, I'm always going to have yeah. a PC. And does that happen? Uh, it can do. I was offered that. I was offered that by twice you? in my amateur career. Um, one guy that was just around the amateur gym. When I was in court one day for another illegal issue, when I was younger, someone come up with a contract, 250 Gs. To sign it. I was thinking, God damn, where's that pen? Where's that pen? I was like, thinking, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, how, how have you not signed that contract? I don't know. I don't know. Did you say no then? You must have said no. Yeah, because I know, because obviously I love the the documentaries, and I luckily you I saw done the horror studying. stories. I done, yeah, I done a lot of studying on the horror stories, so swerved that. I was offered ten million to someone to sign. At what point? Uh, probably like 2015. Was that tempting? Nah. You said no straight away. Yeah, I just backed myself. Yeah. I backed myself, I backed myself. Who was that? He, I'm not gonna he's telling say. Not. Nah, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> I tried to do it relaxed then, so <laughs> you tell me, I'm like... <laughs> nah, but like, so back to it. All right, so basically I can own your image rights yeah. or I can pay you a fee. But if you bring a lot to the table, we might do a business deal where we can take the risks together. Is that what you've done with Eddie? Yeah, we take risks together. 50-50? No, no way, no way. No. Okay, I was, I was on the outside in this suit. He's a, like, he's he's a pauper in there, this man. deal, isn't he? He's a no, he's not. He's not. He's a big player. He's a big player, but he understands my value. I understand yeah. my value, and I understand his value. It's honestly down to your value, your negotiating skills, and what Eddie wants out of the relationship as yeah. well. Off the back of me joining Eddie, he might sign another hundred athletes. Yeah, yeah. You know. So you've negotiated directly with Eddie yourself or with your team? With the team. Yeah. yeah. With the team, it's too much stress. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to actually be a good boxer. Yeah. But we have to be good businessmen as well, and you're caught in between both worlds. But in order to achieve and improve as an athlete, you know how difficult it is. Yeah. You know, at top level, the small details, even though you've got to focus on the important job in the ring, as we all know with boxing, yeah. the fight is also outside of the ring.
the players taking the knee. What's your view on it? That this is just for a change for the better, for the betterment of my kids, your kids, so harmony's created. Would you take the knee in the ring? Yeah, 100% I would. I'll take the knee anyway. The other thing in boxing that just fascinated me, and to be fair, panel it's happened, in the WBC have tried it in rounds four and eight, is the judges' scorecards. Because the amount of fights that you watch and you're waiting yeah. at the end and you're wondering whether the judges are going to be fair and have integrity, biased towards one fighter yeah, or another. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why don't they just, like in every other sport, you know the score at certain Real points? Real talk. Real talk. Why, don't, why is that? I mean, it just seems to me that you're almost like... Real talk. I don't know. You know, after round three, you just put the scores up. Because you know what to do then. And like, you know, you know how they're yeah, seeing things. You know where you are, you yeah. know that. You know what? If, even for a fan, I'm going to be like, he's going to come out hard this round. Exactly. He's losing. But you don't even know who's going to win no. until that final. And then. And there seems to be like a trust so with. The, weird. You know, yeah. When I'm listening to the commentators on the telly, there seems to be like a trust with the judges. It's almost like, well, I'm not sure how he's going to score yeah. it or she. Or how they score it. Yeah. Or why. Because I feel like. Naturally, the majority of fans know who wins a fight and knows who loses. Yeah. Without a scorecard, if you were to do a survey, probably 80% of the people would choose mm. a winner and 20% might. But the majority is with the crowd. And then sometimes, as you say, the refs and judges might go with a 20%, which I couldn't actually tell you why. Yeah. That's why I believe, kids, if you want to be a boxer, make sure you knock them out. <laughs> it's the best way because you take it out of the judges' hands, don't you? How would you not clean up boxing, but what would you change in boxing to make it more transparent, less... You talk, I mentioned the word mafia before. Matchroom what? are doing that. Yeah? Matchroom are doing that. Yeah, Matchroom are doing a great job of that, if I'm honest with you, in terms of partnerships. OK, so I'd have more behind-the-scenes footage of these guys going to the Olympics now. So I'd introduce more content creation. because For young boxers. For young boxers, because what happens, you don't want to get to the World Championship fight and then announce yourself to the world. Mm. You need that journey. Exposure. To, yeah, so I believe like when you join Manchester United, you join heritage, mm -hmm. you join a history. But when Anthony Joshua came on the scene, I don't have any history. So I have to create that. Mm -hmm. In the space of my short career, I don't only have to be good at fighting, but I have to create a legacy and history. So that will help fighters with sponsorships, funding for their sport, help with the amateur system. The promoters would have to invest in the amateurs because they obviously want to sign these guys. And then in terms of the fights, I would say what you said, like VAR, for example, like count the punches each round. Have a system where yeah. people are counting and you could know he's landed 10, he's landed five, so he's winning. So you can see who's got a push. Would you like to know when you're sat there at the, in the corner? I used to know when I was an amateur. Yeah, because you'd get told. When I was an amateur, I'd be like, you're a round down. Come on, because you'll get handed yeah, yeah. The, the, the score. The scorecard, yeah. the scorecard they'll give you it But why does that corner. change? In... in the pros, it's not like that. But what's the reason behind that? I don't know. Just tradition or...? I don't know. I just go in that's to a... win. One of the things in football at the moment that's a big debate is around the players taking the knee. Yeah. And the fans are booing, or some fans are booing the yeah, players yeah, yeah, taking yeah. the knee. Some players actually are saying that they shouldn't take the knee, mm -hmm. and some players are saying that they should take the knee. Mm -hmm. What's your view on it, looking from the outside at football and how it's handling that situation? I feel like the players and the teams have done a great job of explaining what the reasons are for taking the knee. And as a fan, whether you're there for that or not, you're there to watch the team win. So the importance of supporting your teammates and your players, emotionally, you're with them through thick and thin. That's the whole point of being like, I ride for this team. That's loyalty. Mm -hmm. The reason that has been explained of them taking in the is to bring awareness to an issue that's been going on before phones were recording certain incidents. These things were happening. Mm -hmm. Some people are aware, some people have learnt more recently. But as I said, it's nice that the explanation was made clear as to why the knee is. That it's not taken. political, that it's, it's far from. Yeah. Even for me, it's not a political yeah. stance. I've had to learn about what's happened and what's been going on more so last year and this year than I ever have to understand that this is just for a change for the better. It's not political, it's not about defunding anything or funding anything. Mm -hmm. The change wants to be made for the better, for the betterment of my kids, probably your kids, probably the person down the road's kids. So harmony's created because um, division is going to cause war. And, uh, that's would you, would you take the knee in the ring? 
Yeah, 100% I would, 100%. I'll take the knee anyway. This little chubby Mexican that beat me. Sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> Were you complacent? No excuses. This is my journey at the end of the day. And however I ride this journey is up to me. I do it for the team. When I win, we all win. So, Anthony, this section of the show is called Failure is a Bruise, Not a Tattoo. OK. Well, there's a bit of a story behind it. So I was a manager, you probably won't, may not know this, in Valencia for four months. Yeah, I got yeah. sacked. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't I know. Very... <laughs> I didn't do very well. And someone sent me this as I came home. So it always stuck with me since. Yeah. I've always used it basically, you know, basically failing is all right. It's temporary, you know, it's not permanent. So if there was a moment in your life where you feel that that statement rings true, what would that moment be? When it really hit home is when I lost my first professional fight. Because you build up a sense of resilience, isn't it? Like when you're winning or you're a winner, um, you feel like you're indestructible. Yeah. So I used to listen to a lot of motivational speeches where it's like, um, you know, you gotta know what it feels like to lose and you've gotta be strong. And I'll be thinking, I'm a winner. Yeah. It has no relevance to me, but I can kind of take certain things from it. And then when you lose something or someone and it's really time to be strong, it's important to go through the grieving process. And that, that's like the bruise. It's important to understand what that feels like, the pain. But after a while, that pain has to go and you have to kind of pick yourself up again and go. When I was sat at Valencia, I felt like I was being ridiculed a little mm. bit. You almost feel like everyone's laughing at you, almost like you don't want to go out a little bit mm. for a few weeks. Did that, is that something that you felt when you've lost fights? So, as an amateur, I lost three fights. The thing is, only your close people really know, and, mm. you know, people love you unconditionally that are close yeah. to you. And the people that support you, the only reason they ridicule you is because they look at you as, like, you're not human. Yeah. And they support you so much that they don't want to see you lose. So I understand their frustration. But on the flip side, when I lost in June 2019, so I was in America at the time. And, you know, this little chubby guy, little chubby Mexican, they say, beat me. Sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely give you a run for your money. Don't worry. <laughs> no, so he beat me, yeah. And I just know if I would have given up when I lost as an amateur, I would never be here. Yeah. So if I let the ridicule and the, the stick and the bit of banter kind of get to me now, there'll be no future. So you just got to keep on rolling, keep mm. on rolling. This is my journey at the end of the day. And however I ride this journey is up to me. The important thing is, is someone out there is going to take inspiration from your wins and losses. Going back to that first fight with Ruiz, what have you learnt most from that? What's the bit that comes out of that fight that you say, right, that's going to change that? Were you complacent? It happens in football. No excuses. No, no. I, no, no excuses. No, but in football, you go to an away ground sometimes, you're going to beat them. But and I then all of a sudden, you just don't quite do... You just don't feel the same. No, it's like... We've travelled around the world fighting yeah. for years. Azerbaijan, Turkey. We've been Mauritius training camps. I've been Saudi Arabia to yeah. fight. I've been America to fight. It just sometimes happens. It's just yeah. the way the stars align that night. And there's obviously reasons to why the stars... The stars just don't go that way. Yeah. There's a lot of things pulling the forces together yeah. and sooner or later it will either go in your favour it won't and that night it didn't but I learnt to be to be independently strong. I remember looking in the mirror when I was in Valencia in that period and I felt lonely. Yeah? Yeah. Did you, did you, ever, did you ever feel lonely? No. After a fight when you've no, lost no. On your, either as an amateur or as a professional? Nah. No that's not no. been a feeling that you've had? No because it's been a, it's been a real fun, tough, yeah. rough I pay my dues, but it's a fun journey. Yeah. God, let's crack on. Let's get on with it. There's no negatives with this situation. Like, you even managing Valencia is like a... It's a blessing. Mm. It's not bad. It's not like, for them, it wasn't. <laughs> OK, for them, for them. <laughs> but then they might learn something from it. Like, for me, yeah, even, yeah. Okay, even though no, I would. lost, yeah, to no, Ruiz, look how many Mexicans I made happy. I granted them the first Mexican champion of the world. Off of my suffering, yeah. I've made other people happy I've changed his family's life so we can look at it from that perspective and that's all life is about just the way you look at things isn't it do you have coping mechanisms to help Loads. you come out do you have coping me mechanisms to come out of like difficult moments or moments of anxiety or moments of yeah, where you yeah, yeah. What, what would they be something at the minute is like honestly it sounds stupid but cold shower 
a lovely warm shower is what we all want, yeah. morning and night. But turn that shower cold and stand there like strong and yeah. put yourself in a position that you don't want to be in. I don't want to be in a cold shower, but I'm going to turn it cold because I know I'm mentally strong enough to do it. So I just know that's something so simple that when a tough time comes, I know I'm mentally strong, strong yeah. enough to do certain things in my normal day to day. So what makes me think I'm not mentally strong enough to go through this? You just can't be comfortable, yeah. <laughs> you know, all your life. One day you're going to have a batch of grapes and one of them's going to be sour. Yeah. That's just how life is. So I put myself in uncomfortable situations in order to approach my mindset and be strong enough that when it happens, I'm already built up a callus in my mm -hmm. brain that nothing's going to stop me. That's interesting, I think, because you see some fighters, they'll lose a fight and it'll be unexpected and then they'll change the promoter, they'll change the backroom team, they'll change... You've not done that, have you? You've kept the same... We keep, but we add. Yeah. It's important to add. It's important to add to the team. What and have you, what have you added? Have you got a psychologist within your team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh. I, and, I'll, and I'll also look for more psychologists. OK. We've got coaches. We've got even, like, as a management team, I had one manager, then we grow. Now I can contact two managers. I can contact yeah. three managers. So the team is growing for the benefit of the cause. It's not about ego. It's not about being selfish. Like, no, I'm the only one who should contact him. It's, yeah. How can we make it easier for him? Or how can we make the system easier? So, yeah, I believe like three options were keep the same, completely change or add and grow to what we have. And I believe the third option was was the best and the most organic option. Is that one to obviously improve, but also loyalty is incredibly important? Yeah, so it's down to your character. Everyone's different. So everything I say today is not the gospel because mm. everyone has their own perspective of life. But for me, I, I think that loyalty for me is important. I just think like to my community in Watford, to my friends in London, to my amateur club, to being in Sheffield, and I do it for the team. When I win, we all win. Brilliant, Anthony. Every guest on the overlap gets a little gift, and I was oh, I was wait, told. Really? So I was told. <laughs> so I was told that you play chess. Yes. And London yes. and London's your favourite city. Cheers. So we've got you a skyline of London. No way. Chessboard. Oh, I'd have to do them through more of these interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Unbelievable. London Eye. The, the Eye, the Gherkin. The Gherkin. The What's Shard, Big Ben. Yeah. How good Style are you at chess? chess? Can you play? No. Can't you? Is no. It? Is that the mind thing The again? thing is, we, we played yesterday. I slept kind of late yesterday. What is that for? The, is that for the concentration? I just like, do you know what it is? I think... Where everything was closed during the pandemic, uh, I just played a lot of board games. So we play like Risk, Chess, Monopoly. They're quite fun, yeah? yeah, yeah. So I don't go out much. Sometimes you bring the party yeah. to you. What sort of party do you have when you're playing uh, chess? What party? Oh, is, that, is that a party, it's chess? It's part of the process. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the process. Got shots lined up a lot. <laughs> Brilliant, Anthony. I absolutely love that. Respect. And you're a good man. Yeah, thank thank you, you so much. Now, I truly appreciate it. Oh, thank, thank you. you.